Hi friends, welcome to my channel, That's Ready Homeschool. My name is Mrs. T. Today we're gonna to be talking about first grade science. I have put so much preparation, thought, and planning into our science for this upcoming school year because quite frankly, kindergarten science was a little bit of a struggle for us for the majority of the school year. And I didn't want that to happen again. I wanted us to have a really successful science year. So. Today, we're gonna to be doing a deep dive into our science. I'm gonna talk about what our goals were, what I was looking for from a science curriculum perspective, and just kind of go over these resources that we selected. Now, if you haven't seen it yet, I'll put it in the description of the video here, my first grade curriculum pick video. And this is going to have a lot of this content in there, but there are some changes, and then you'll also kind of get the reason why I selected certain things as well. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications because if you wanna see the inside of any of this content, I have additional videos coming out very soon where you can see the inside of each of these resources that I'm talking about. So you'll wanna stick around so you can see the inside of the content. Okay, so let's first start with what our goals were and what I was looking for from a science curricul curriculum perspective. So I noticed pretty quickly when I started searching for science curriculum, that there are really two different types of science curriculum that you can get. The first type is when you are focusing on like a single topic for a full year and you're really diving deep into it. And we'll call this almost a mastery style approach to science, right? So you're studying just zoology, for example, for the full year, and you might start with the very basic intro, but by the end of the year, your child has scaffolded a lot of knowledge into their brains all about zoology. And then the second approach is kind of reflective of almost a spiral approach to science. And that is rather than focusing on one topic, you are starting to build the foundations for multiple areas of study. So for example, you might um, introduce basic physics. So we're talking gravity and inertia movement, for example. And then you'll also build the foundation with basic chemistry. You'll start talking about um, you know, chemical reactions and physical reactions. You might also then um, add in bits of that zoology. You might add in bits of the envi environmental science, earth science, so on and so forth. And you kind of circle around them. And it's not gonna be like a perfect spiral, but you do go back and the idea is you start with foundations from all these different areas and you build up. And I knew that I wanted that approach. I did not wanna just focus on one area of science for my first grader. So I was looking for kind of that more spirally approach to science. The other thing um, on top of like a regular science, one thing that is really important to my family is the environment. And I really wanted there to be an environmental education undertone to our science. So we did this last year, we had our normal science and then we had environmental science. And I absolutely loved that. So I wanted to continue that. It was very successful um, last year. So I wanted to have that as well. Those were my two main requirements. Now, on top of this, other things that I kind of noticed is that there are really three different types of material for science, or I will say teaching approaches, right? There's the Christian perspective, there is a neutral perspective and a secular perspective. And a lot of the science can be taught from a neutral neutral perspective. Like I don't mind learning about gravity from a neutral perspective, right? That's totally fine. But I did know that there were certain topics with science that I really wanted to pull in a secular perspective. So I um, really had my eye out for neutral, but secular was preferred. The other thing that I had to consider for our situation is I did talk to my child and I asked what he wanted to personally learn. And of the four things that he mentioned, two of them were science related. So he is very interested in the human body. He has this book, he actually has a couple of books, but one of the books that he absolutely adores is this book that's like a shine a light book. And he will just paw over this book forever. He loves doing the flashlight in this and he does it with his brother. And there's like another book with a 3D model that he likes to get his hands on and touch. And so he's very interested in the human body. So he asked to learn more about that. And they also asked to learn um, to continue coding. So we do computer coding with him currently and he loves it. And I would consider both of these science topics. So I also needed to consider his own personal interests. And then the last thing is there is this approach to teaching really any subject that's literature based. And that's where you're gonna be really reading a lot of topic, a lot of books about the topic. So in this case, your science is going to be really literature heavy. And 
I thought that that's going to be kind of the approach that we wanted just because we love books so much. But I ultimately took a step back and I realized that I was kind of picking that approach with so many things that it can get a little bit overwhelming. And I really didn't want to suck the joy out of reading. So I chose not to get a literature based program for our science this upcoming year. I'm not against reading science books. I think that's great, but I wanted it to be more um, hands on and less focused on just reading about it in books. Now, reading about it in books, again, totally fine to supplement, but I didn't want that to be the main focus. And then the last thing, my child is at an age where I think scientific notebooking is going to be very important. So I wanted him to have some written and thinking outside of the box exercises for him that he can explore with pencil to paper. Uh, but I didn't want to get a notebook or a workbook curriculum, right? I didn't want us to fall into the trap of him just doing workbooks. So I had all these different things that I was trying to consider for our science education. All right, so let's go ahead and just get into it. What are we going to use curriculum wise to support all of these thoughts? <laughs> we are going to be using Building Foundations of Scientific Understanding by Bernard J. Nebel. And this here is really going to check that box off for a neutral slash secular program that is going to be that spiral approach, that introduction to many different science topics at an introduction level. Now this book is meant for grades K through second. So we are going to be going through half of this program in this upcoming school year. And if all goes well, you'll see that this will be pulled into second grade as well. Now this book is a little bit difficult to implement. And in fact, I picked it for kindergarten and I did not implement it well. So um, I did a lot more prep Keep your eyes open. I will be actually doing a video completely about um, how I'm going to be preparing for BFSU. But one of the resources I'm going to shout out here is this one here. This is Early Elementary Science Education I by Shannon Jordan. It was written with Bernard J. Nebel, who wrote BFSU, and this really helped me in my planning process. So these two will be really used as our main core for science. Now let's talk a little bit about environmental science. So we're going to be using the same resource that we use in our kindergarten year. It's from Project Learning Tree. It's called Environmental Education Activity Guide. And this resource is amazing. I got it from Thrift Books. It is such a good purchase. If you can get your hands on it, I highly recommend it. This activity guide is from pre-K to eight, and it is just filled with so many amazing activities and discussions and book recommendations and hands-on learning all about the environment. And it is just such a gem. I got it for a couple of bucks. It was so worth it. <laughs> but we will be continuing with that. Now, from my children's personal perspective, he mentioned coding and the human body. So for coding, we are going to continue with utilizing a free resource online called code.org. And if you haven't checked it out, I also highly recommend it. It is easy to use. My kids love it. It is a, it's a really nice program. I highly recommend it. All right, let's talk about the human body. This is where it starts to vary a little bit from what my original curriculum pick video had. So I originally was going to use Core Knowledge, their human body free uh, first grade unit. I was going to use that to dive into it. But I am a little bit of a dodo sometimes, and I forgot that I had purchased a couple of years ago at one of the big Pandia Press sales, I bought this book here, which is called Real Science Odyssey Life. And I decided that let's pivot. The core knowledge resource looks wonderful, but I want to use what I have here. So this particular book, this is one of those mastery style that I was telling you about where you're focusing on one topic. So this is really diving into plant life, animal life, the human body, so on and so forth. So we aren't going to be using this whole book. We're just going to be using a portion of this book. And this introduces different parts of the body. There's a little page where you're going to read about a topic and then they come with different science labs. And I thought that this would be really fun to do. So we will be reading through and doing some science labs going through the human body portion here. Now, um, the other thing that we will be doing is we, I wanted more hands-on than that because these two labs 
are great, but I had already found this resource and this one looks particularly fun. And this is the Human Body Learning Lab. This is going to be something we're pulling in where we will be going based on the Real Science Odyssey order of things, but we will be taking those same topics once we finish Real Science Odyssey, we'll be pivoting over here and finishing up the different hands-on from this learning lab as well. And they actually have completely different um, labs and exercises. So I was really, really excited about this. This is really, really a great thing. And then one thing that I did not point out that I got, I think I got this one from either Book Outlet or it must be Book Outlet. I think I got this from Book Outlet a while ago, but I have this glow in the dark um, human body sticker book. I'm just going to throw this finally, take it out. I've had it for a while, um, but this will just be a a random resource that we have. And this does have things for us to read, activities to do, stickers, um, but it's definitely more basic. This is a workbook. This is not going to be our main, but we will also go through this guy. Okay, so you will notice that as I'm talking through these, I haven't really talked about that notebooking aspect of our science. So let me share with you guys what I created. Here we have our handy dandy science notebook. Yay! <laughs> I've created a notebook here. So this actually, this idea came from one of you lovely viewers. I was talking about BFSU in a previous video and how I felt unprepared for using it in the kindergarten year. And they recommended, okay, get ready for this. They recommended that I join a Facebook group. So I created a Facebook account just to join this group. I joined this group and in there, there was a file that was shared, a post, that included notebooking pages that somebody had created. And it turned out that came from a blog. And in that blog, I will link exactly where I found it all in the description. But in that blog, they listed out, um, it was a parent who created their own notebooking pages to support BFSU. Now it wasn't secular, and there were things that I wanted to change, but I took a lot of inspiration from the notebooking pages that this parent shared. And I actually reused a lot of it, but then I also added my own. So I created here, and this is kind of what made me think about the notebooking. Well, it got me thinking how I was envisioning notebooking. So I created basically three tabs in this notebook. I have BFSU, Project Learning Tree, and then Body Labs. So in the BFSU tab here, I have already pre-printed all of the notebooking pages that I have created, again, with help from this resource. But I also took, I went through every single lesson for BFSU, and there's a section that talks about discussion, questions, activities, and basically a way to solidify learning. And I put a lot of those into questions in here and made them notebooking opportunities. So BFSU is going to take us, we're gonna be talking about one topic for about two-ish weeks, and we will be completing these activity pages over the course of two weeks, and there really aren't very many. So when we finish with our hands-on and our discussions, um, exploration of the topic, we will also add in this guided notebooking practice. Now from a project learning tree's perspective, same thing you guys, I have the project learning tree tab here. And again, I took inspiration from the other one, but this one I created entirely from scratch. And I went through all of the lessons. I selected the different lessons we wanted to do, and I just went with it. <laughs> uh, we are going to be doing one of these topics every three-ish weeks. And we, again, will have some of these notebooking pages that will correspond, and we will do one lesson over the course of three weeks. So that will be our project learning trees notebooking side of things. And then the last tab that I have in this book is the body labs. And what I'm going to do from Real Science Odyssey, I'll do one little sneak peek preview here. Um, here's a good example of, I just opened up to the digestive lab. So you can see it has this lab write up that I can um, cut out, not cut out, um, take out of the book and copy. And that's what I'm going to do. So I haven't done this part yet, but I will do it before the school year starts. So I'm gonna take all of those labs out from the book. I'm going to copy them, print them, 
hole punch them and put them in here. So at the end of our science year, we'll have a good review of everything that we've talked about from BFSU perspective, from our environmental science perspective, and our lab write-ups. And this will be like his, all of his science in one spot for the whole year. And I'm really excited about this. To help me keep track of all of these different resources, I actually created a Google Sheet. And you can see here we have a column for our building foundation. So you can see what we are going to be doing for BFSU. We have a column here. Oh, and it's about two weeks on average for BFSU, one lesson. We have a column for Project Learning Tree, and it's about three weeks per lesson. And then we have a human body theme here, and this will be pointing out the labs that we will be doing from real science as well as the human body learning lab. So I have everything kind of outlined based on um, what all my preparation showed we would be doing. So anyway, you guys, that is our science. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. I'm very interested in what you guys are doing for science in this upcoming school year. So share. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I will talk to you later. Bye everyone.